We're starting a series called Basic Training. We're going to make sure that we're still on track. We're going to make sure that we're still thinking the same way. Our confession is the same. We believe the same things. You know, when you go into the service, they have six weeks or eight weeks of basic training. They train you to be a soldier. They train the quit out of you. They train endurance into you. They make sure you're physically strong. You're conditioned well. You're an expert with weapons. That you understand why you're fighting, who your enemy is. You learn the strategy of warfare, how to win. You make sure that you know who your general is. How many know we have a great general called Jesus Christ? And so we're going to, for the next four weeks, we're going to have some basic training. I want you to put those scriptures, let's put Jude 3 and 4 on the, on the screen. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, to fight, to fight, to go to war. And make sure that you contend for the faith. Contend earnestly for the faith which was once and for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and the Lord Jesus Christ. He said there's false teachers, people that are dressed up like godly men. And you must fight. You must keep your eyes open. You must make sure they, they go no further. How many know we're in a warfare? How many know that when you become a Christian, the war begins? It's not easy street begins, but the struggle, the war begins. We have to go to war and make sure that the church is on track, that they're lifting up Jesus Christ, and that there's no idols before us. There's no other gods before us. There's no other name that compares to the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Put up 1 John chapter 2. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You can't love the world and have the love of the Father in you. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. That's a good way to just check, get a check up from the neck up right there. You know, if, I, if the lust of the flesh is ruling my life, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, I've lost the love of the Father. I'm not, uh, we're not connected. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour. Tell the person next to you, it's the last hour. And as you've heard that the Antichrist, that anti-Jesus, might look like Jesus, might talk like Jesus, but is anti-Jesus, is coming. Even now, many antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. Many people come dressed up in a great charity or a great function that might say, this is really godly and this is compassionate and this is merciful. But are they serving Jesus Christ? There's really no in-between. There's the kingdom of God and there's the kingdom of this world. Amen. Amen. All right, next one. Let's look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight. It's the fight of faith. S to stay passionately in love with Christ. To preach the gospel in the name of Jesus. That you're preaching the kingdom. The Lord came and he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Don't live for another kingdom. Turn away from living for that kingdom and come and preach the kingdom. It is at hand. It's here. Why? Because I'm its king. 
Amen. He said, fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight because the one who's on your side has never lost a battle. Amen. Amen. It's a good fight. It's the fight of faith to keep your faith in Jesus Christ. Let your strength, the goodness in your life, that Jesus becomes a central figure of your life in everything you do. If you look at the Middle East and you see all the wars and all the craziness in the Middle East, there sits Israel right in the middle and no one can touch it. It is a central figure of the Middle East and it speaks to the church today that Jesus is the central figure and no one can overcome him. That he is everything. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. If you fight the good fight of faith, you'll lay hold on eternal life. To which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Let's go to the next one, 2 Timothy 4, 7. Paul, we love his, we love his letters, two-thirds of the New Testament. We preach it. We quote it. We love his letters, but we must love his lifestyle too. Amen. Amen. He said, I fought the good fight. I finished the race. That's how you finish the race. You fight the good fight. You fight the good fight. I finished the race. I have kept the faith. Let's go to the next one, 1 Peter 5. Are you still with me? Don't you love the Word of God? This is the captain of our salvation. We have to follow his marching orders. We have to speak like he speaks. We have to look like he looks. We have to live like he lives. Be sober. Come on. Stop drinking so much. Stay sober. Be vigilant. Be steadfast because your adversary, the devil. How many knows you have an enemy? You need to keep Keep it clear who your enemy is. This is where you win the fight. When you're fighting Satan, when you're wrestling with flesh and blood, you lose. It's powers and principalities, rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. If you keep the fight there, you win every time because you have authority from Jesus over Satan. You do not have authority from Jesus over people. God is not going to side with you against people. He died for everybody that you're mad at. You can't get him to do it. Be sober. Be, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion. But he makes out like he is. He makes out like he can take you down. He comes in your weak points and tries to convince you that he's going to steal your finances, your job, your family. He's not going to because you have authority in the name of Jesus. You can bind him. Come on. You have authority from on high and victory in Jesus Christ. He's going about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You, you've got to stay in the faith. You've got to stay sober and vigilant. And you have to say, you may not devour me. You're not going to take my family. You're not going to take my life. You're not going to take my church. You're not touching my pastor. Come on. <laughs> Y'all got to pray for me. Okay, let's go to the next one. <laughs> Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call in election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Come on, you're going to win every time. Tell the person next to you, you're a winner. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you of all these things, always, though you know and are established in the present truth. I'm about to tell you stuff today. I'm about to relay stuff to you. Ah, we know that. But it is so important that I remind you, under the anointing of God, to keep you strong and steadfast in the things of God. Why? Because your adversary is coming at you on a regular basis, every day, all the time. And you might think you're still moving forward, but you could be standing still and not know it. 
Amen. Happens all the time. So, I think it is right as long as I'm in this body to stir you up by reminding you. Knowing that shortly I must put off this tent just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. More than anything, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. Come on, this is on video. This is on tape. You'll always be reminded. You'll always have something you can turn to. But today I'm going to remind you because it is important that we talk about the basic things that we've learned in Christ. It's, it's important that we're stirred up again in that. That there's a passion and a fire in us to preach Jesus Christ to the lost. To go out and seek them out. To embrace them. To bring a love of the Lord to all people that we come in contact with. To have a, a representation in our life that God is a God of goodness and loving kindness and faithfulness. Come on, that He is a God of healing. He has strength and power and protection. That God is a victorious God. Not a defeated God, but a victorious God. Can we give Him a loud praise today? Come on. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is, are you born again? Are you born again? Are you sure? Could you sit down and define clearly, succinctly, confidently to someone, this is what it means to be born again? Would you be confident in that? 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith. You need to know that you can do this because once you know and are clear and confident of what it means to be born again, then you will know the kind of effort and, and strength that it takes to see others born again. You will know exactly how to live your life. You will know exactly how to schedule your time. You will know exactly where to put your efforts and your strength. Because Jesus said, I've come to seek and save those who are lost. Amen. Go to John 3. John 3. Are you born again? Do you know what it means? Could you define it? Would it take you five paragraphs to come around to it and try to explain it? John 3. Jesus is there and I call this Nick at night. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God. I believe that. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. That's what I believe, Rabbi, that you are from God and that God is with you. We believe what you're saying. Nicodemus is a believer. And he's Running it down for Jesus is, I believe you. I believe what you say. And Jesus says quickly, hey, stop. Let me tell you what's real. He answered, and most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He said, all the things that you're saying mean absolutely nothing. They hold no value, no water. It means nothing to anyone unless you are born again. Because the devil believes that I'm from God. The devil knows that I've come from God. The devil knows that I'm a teacher. Everything that you believe, Satan believes. But you must be born again. Nicodemus said, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born 
of water, that means you're born through your mother. Her water breaks. It's not water baptism. It's that you have to be born through in the flesh. Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, there's a difference between being born of the flesh and born of the Spirit. You can't be born again if you're not born of the Spirit. If you're born of the flesh and not born of the Spirit, you're not born again. You can believe a lot of stuff when you're in the flesh. Nicodemus is in the flesh. I believe all these things. And he said, it does you no good. You must be born again. Unless one is born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. There's a difference. Everybody say, there's a difference. We're all born of the flesh. But unless you're born of the Spirit, you're not born again. You can have an amazing belief system. You can believe all kinds of things about God. You can be a singer in the praise and worship team. You can be a person in, serving in the children's ministry. Those are all admirable. And you can believe a lot of religious stuff. You can believe a lot of things that other Christians believe. But if you are not born of the Spirit, you're not born again. And there's a lot of people in churches today that are not born again. Stay with me, okay? All right. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Don't marvel that I said to you, listen, you must be born again. He keeps saying it. This is the third time he said it. you got to be born of the Spirit. You need to be born again. You must be born again. It is important for us to know what it is to be born again and what it takes to be born again and how to lead others into a born again experience. Amen. Amen. This is basic training. But much of the church does not know how to do it. They don't really know how to define it. Tell the person next to you, you must be born again. Look at Matthew 7. Matthew 7. Now, as you're turning to Matthew 7, later on in verse 16, he says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus runs it down for him, that you will perish if you're not born again. That the born again experience is, listen to me, without Christ, I am lost in this life and I have no hope. There's nothing I can do to advance my condition. I can't be good enough because it's not my sinful ways that's the problem. It's my sinful nature that's the problem. My nature is sinful. And I must have the nature of God so that God can embrace me as a child of God. And only Jesus can forgive my sins so the Holy Spirit can bring the nature of God. Are you here? Amen. We're going to go over that in a second. But if you don't have that, you will perish. You will surely slide out of the pew and into hell. And there's many that are in that condition today. And they do all kinds of great things. They're amazing singers. They're amazing servers. They pay their tithe. They attend church on a regular basis. But they're not born again. You have to know that you're born again. Amen. He's, Jesus comes to the church of Ephesus and he says, listen, I got something to tell you. You're incredible. You're perfect in every way. You have all the orthodoxy. Everything that you need to do, you should be doing as a good Christian. You do it. And I think you're amazing, but you have one problem. You left your first love. So you can have all this religious orthodoxy, but not be connected to Jesus. That's one thing they teach you at boot camp. You amen your pastor. Yeah. What did I tell you to do? Matthew 7. 
Verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. It's wide open. You can get away with so much stuff. You can still have your old ways and still go to church. You can still look like you used to and still sing the songs. You can't out-worship a sinful nature. I don't care how many worship things you go to. You can go to Hillsong. You can go to Elevation. You you can go to the greatest worship conferences ever and lift your hands till you're so exhausted. But if your nature hasn't been changed, you're not born again. Amen. Don't get me wrong. I love all those. I'm, I'm for them. I love it. I love all their songs. We do them here. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many. Everybody say many. There are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate. It's constrained. It constricts you. It holds you. And difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are a few that find it. There are a few that find it. Let me ask you a question. This is not a trick question. I just want you to be honest with me. Is many more or less than few? It's not, a, it's not tricky. Yeah. Raise your hand if you think it's more. Let me ask you again. Put your hands down. Raise your hand if you think it's more. Hold on. Is many, many go into the broad way, few go into the narrow way? Now, is many more or less than few? Raise your hand if it's more. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. Keep it up. Don't put it down until I tell you. What you've just told me is more people go to hell than to heaven. Put your hands down. More people find their way in hell than the few that find their way into heaven. It would be a, a heartbreaking, destructive, soul-destructive thing if anyone in this room left today without truly being born again. When his arms are wide open, he loves you dearly. He's not mad at you. But as we keep going today, I believe that the goodness of God is leading you to repentance. I believe he's got a hold of you and pulling you towards him. But I'm telling you, the devil's got game. The spirit of the world, the philosophy of the world, the opinions of the world, the what the world worships, the idols of the world, they are pulling on us and trying to look like Jesus all the time. But we have to make sure that it's the spirit of God who lives in us that the fruit of the Spirit is in everything that we're a part of. Are you here? You have to be born again. Tell the person next to you, you must be born again. All right. So, I hear it all the time. You know, let's let's read. Let's just keep reading. Yeah. Let's look at verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. He who does the will of my Father in heaven. What he's saying is that it makes no difference your activity. What means everything is that you've surrendered your will to his will. Are you listening? Activity can leave you empty. You can have all the activity in the world, but it will not satisfy you. You you can do all kinds of religious things. It won't satisfy you. But when your will is submitted to His will only, 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 there's a freedom and a liberty and a confidence that He's on your side. Glory to God. And that everything you put your hands to is going to be valuable and worth living for. Whoo, man, what a life. What a life. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say, many, say many, many, there's that word many again. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? 
and I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me who practice lawlessness. Your will is not submitted to me. You still have a lawless nature. You're still rebellious. Your nature is rebellious towards my nature. It's amazing that the people who are com completely committed to all the, all the spiritual activity, they prophesy in His name, they cast out demons. What else do they do? Many wonders in your name. How many more of those who just attend on Sunday are not born again? you got all these people with all this religious activity. He says, I don't even know who you are. I've never met you. But we prophesied. I know. I gave you all of me. Come on. I, I, I opened up the door that you could prophesy. Cast, I gave you authority. I gave you all of this. But you never came to me and submitted your will to my will. There was never a surrender to me. That's what he's saying. You're not born again. How about those people that just come on Sunday? They never get involved. How about the holiday Christians? They only come on Easter and Christmas. How many people think they're born again, but they're not born again? It's a horrific thought. But we have to preach it from the mountaintops that you must be born again. The church is letting them not be born again. But we have to be born again and live that life. I was uh, raised as a Baptist. I went to church all my life. I went down front and said the prayer and gave my heart. I thought I was giving my heart to Jesus so I could be water baptized because that was the thing to do. And I went off to college and lost my mind. And I met Steve there, and his mind was gone the same. And his brother's was the same. And we hung around with, there's two or three or four of us that had no mind at all. And uh, then I, I, I was a theater major, which was so funny. It was so weird. Uh, never mind. And then, I, so I came out to L.A. to be an actor and a songwriter. I moved out here. Basically, I was failing in life, and I thought, I'll just go out to California and take a stab at it because I don't want to fail in front of my family or my friends. And I came out here empty and, uh, you know, did the thing, got in the acting class, go on the interview, blah, 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 blah. And Steve, uh, at the time, had a, a television show with Michelle Pfeiffer. He was wor a working actor, and, and he was hanging around three or four other people, and so they, they let me come and hang around them, and I thought that we were the same spiritually, but they had something I didn't have. You see, I was, I was cursing. I was like a sailor, and the, the more they, they were righteous, the more I cursed. Hanging around them, saying to myself, no, 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 I'm, 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 just, as, I'm just as spiritual as they are. But, but what is it about them that's different than I am? What do they have that I don't have? You see, I wasn't born again. But the Bible says the goodness of God leads men to repentance. He was drawing me. I was seeing the difference between Steve and his brothers and his friends than me. And there was a struggle going on, and I didn't want to give up my position. But I was coming to a point where the misery was too much. And they had joy, and they had the peace of God, and there was a light on them. And I had to recognize, I'm not there. But here's God just drawing me. He's showing me. Come on, Mel. Come on, there's more. You're not there, there's more. It, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a woman who is, who is pregnant. You know, the seed is planted, and then she gets pregnant, 
and then the war is on. What do you want? I want you to go out and get me pickles and strawberry jam and mayonnaise right now. Uh, but I can't. I need it right now. So the, she's pregnant with something beautiful, but the war is on. There's a struggle going on for nine months. And all of a sudden, there's a birth. There's a new birth. And that's the way it is with a Christian. When the seed is planted, you think that because you kind of believe that the Lord is who He says He is, that that's all you need. No, no, no. You're not there yet. You have to come to the point where you surrender your will to Jesus Christ. Are you listening? Here's what Paul said. I'm, I was crucified with the Lord. It's no longer I that live, but He that liveth in me. And the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who died for me and gave Himself for me. And in other words, there's no more male heirs. There's me in Christ and Him living through me. We're one together now. I, I'm not the same as I used to be. I'm not the, I'm not the Jew or Greek or whatever culture I had. I'm not the white or black or blue or purple. That no longer has a place in me because that's the old me. That man got crucified with Jesus. He's no longer alive. I don't lean on him or his ability or his strength or his position any longer. Now I am in Christ and there is no other person but me in him. Amen. Come on, somebody. My will is surrendered to his will. If it's not... I'm, I still am a person of lawlessness. No, I prophesied. I preached. 25 years, I was the pastor of Innis Presence Church. I know, but you still had a nature that was lawless. You didn't have a new nature because when you're born again, old things have passed away. All things have become new. Can Jesus get a praise in here today? And that's my position. So, I kept, I kept hanging around these guys. And then one day I'm on a freeway, dri driving back, hungover. And the Holy Spirit fills my car. And I am ready to surrender my life. I wasn't before. I thought I was okay. I was doing as many good things as I could do. I was going to church. They were taking me to an all-black church, Fred Price's church. And I thought, well, I'm going to church. And, and uh, wow, this, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But when I met him, I realized I was not good and that I was lost without hope. And I had to acknowledge, I will not make it into heaven. I will perish if you don't save me. So I surrender my will to yours, and I died with Christ right there. Are you listening? You must be born again. You must be born again. Desiree and I, we were, we eloped and went to Vegas. May 23rd, we were married. And, uh, it's really awesome because we didn't tell anybody. And we came back, and we had a wedding for everybody else. You know, everybody thought we were living in sin. So we had a wedding for everybody else on September the 17th. It's awesome because sometimes I forget one of them. You know what I mean? And well, both of us do. Didn't, didn't, our, didn't our anniversary just go by? We'll get the sep September 17th one. We'll be all right. We high five and stuff. And so, but if you've only been married once, you might forget your anniversary date one time. Only one time, because you'll get in trouble. But you'll never forget the event. Because someone moved in with you. You're not the same anymore. Someone moved in and is living with you. 
And now it's no longer about you. It's about you and her or she and he as one. Your life is changed forever. So I hear people ask, when were you saved? When were you born again? I don't know. I think I was born again like eight or when I was eight or 12 or something like that. You're not born again. Because when you're born again, there is such a radical change that you can never, ever, ever forget that you died and you rose in Him. You can't. You must be born again. You know, when, when God made man, He made him good. He made him in His likeness and image. Oh, my gosh. What? She goes, wrap it up. You need to wrap it up. <laughs> Someone moved in with me. God made man good. You're made in the likeness and image. But then when Adam and Eve sinned, sin came into their life. They received a sin nature. Their spirit man died. He said, if you disobey me, surely you're going to die. Not just physically, but spiritually. And so here they have children. Now they have a sin nature. And what's passed on to the kids is not that they, you're made in the likeness and image of God. They passed on you're made in the likeness and image of Adam. And therefore, a son becomes a murderer. So this sin nature starts having its way immediately. I mean, you, you can see it in children today. I mean, nobody teaches kids to, to lie. They will get around to it at some point in time. You never hear a, ch a baby or a child go, you, 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 you. They're going, me, 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 I, 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 me. It's all about them. It's, it's, a, it's a nature that becomes rebellious towards the nature of God. And you start living by the flesh and you do your own things. When, when I was a sinner, living in sin, I wanted to do the things I did. I wanted to do it. Nobody made me do it. That was my nature to do it. It was natural for me to lie and cheat and sin and run around and do all that. But then God changed my want to. I no longer want to do that anymore. He changed my want to. Unless your want to is changed, you're not born again. Or maybe you were born again at one time. But now you find yourself moving back into that old want to. That man, that woman is dead. They were crucified with Christ. Are you born again? When we are born again, we realize the kind of work and time and effort it takes to bring people to Jesus Christ. We have to love them into the kingdom because there must come a moment in their life that they surrender their will to Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why the church is so important. You bring them here and we're able to wrap our arms around them and embrace them so that God can lead them to repentance. When I repented of my sins, I didn't get there in my own strength. It wasn't my works. I can't boast about what happened. It was the Lord that led me there. My decision to surrender to Him was my responsibility. Everything else He did. I cannot boast about my ability and what I did. I can boast that He was faithful. And He led me to that. And didn't give up on me. And embraced me. And kept me. Can we give Him one more shout of praise? Come on! I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. So, you have to answer the question, who's in charge? Who's in charge of your life? Are you born again? I'm going to pray for you in just a second. Maybe you've been born again, but you find yourself leaving your first love. You've gotten involved in religious orthodoxy. Or you're mad at the church. You, you got treated badly. Come on. Get over yourself. 
Everybody gets treated badly in life. No one gets out of here without a scar. In the church, at the bank, with the police, but whatever it is, listen, there's, there's hateful people out there. There's rude people. There's people that are insensitive, and everybody runs into that. But the one you ran into when you were born again is always loving and healing and beautiful. And he's faithful and steadfast, and he'll never let you go, ever let you go. And whatever you need is found in him. He's the central figure of the universe, always will be. So I want to make sure that you're born again. Are you sure? Can you define it? Before you came in here, could you have said that? That you must acknowledge that you're lost and without hope and without Christ you will perish. I have no hope. I'm, I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you, Jesus. Come and be the Lord of my life. Save me. Save me. Bow your heads with me. If you're here today and you're not born again, you'd say, Pastor, I'm a believer. But I saw today that that's not enough to be a believer. I need to purposefully, intentionally surrender my will to His, that I no longer have the right to my opinions or philosophies of this life, that once I surrender my will, I'm only going to say what you say, Lord. Believe what you believe, what you know. I'm going to be in unity with you. My confession will be that I'm living for you and you're living through me. That my old man is dead, crucified with Christ. But I'm alive now in a new creation in Christ. If you're not born again, you can be born again today. It would be horrible for you to leave this room today and not know that you're born again. Or maybe you've left your first love. It's your comeback moment right now. I want to pray for you. I want to make sure that you leave here confident at peace and joy in your life. That you know that He's for you and not against you. His arms are wide open. If you'll come today and just confess and admit to Him that I need you in my life, I need you as my Savior, and I need you as my healer. Would you heal me, Lord? I have hurts and pains and scars. I've, I've got strongholds in my life. I've been living with all this stuff all these years. And now, I don't know how to live. I don't know what to do. I'm coming back to you, Jesus, and you are, you are everything to me. You are everything. I, have, I want no more idols in my life. I want to know what you want. I want to know what you're doing. I want to be a part of your life, Lord. If that's you, with every head bowed, every eye closed, I'm counting to three, and you just slip your hand up in the air. One, two, three. Just slip your hand right up in the air. I see those hands. I see all those hands. Yes, I see them. I see them. I see them. Keep them up. Keep them up. Keep them up. Keep them up. I want you just to look at me. Look at me if you have your hands up. This is it. This is a victorious moment. God led you to this so that you would acknowledge it. It's His work. He loves you so much. He wouldn't leave you the way you are. He's saying, come back, come back. There's so much I want for you. Would you let me pray for you? I want you to get up out of your seat. Meet me right here. We have social distancing right here. Come on. Come right now. Come on. Even if you didn't raise your hand, but you know you should, come right now. These red spots right here, Michael. Make sure that there's another one right there. Just try to find a spot here. It's, it's, come on, give them a great big praise. Come on. Yes, stand right here, over here. Right here, Bill. Give them six feet. Come on, church. Oh, my goodness. Come on, my brother. We'll wait for you. Come on. Come on, church. They need your encouragement. Wow. Thank you, Jesus.
If I, if I begin to pray right now, will you have missed your moment? Are you, come on, we'll wait for you. Are you thinking, I need to be there? Come on, this is about eternity. This is about the kingdom of God. This is about entering into the kingdom and eternity with my Lord. Come on, we'll wait. Come on, they're still coming. Come on, church, we ought to stand to our feet and just shout unto the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Are you born again? Let's pray. I want you to pray with all your heart. Remember, I didn't lead you here. The Lord led you here. He's been doing the work. You can be confident in that. But you've come to this place of, of this decision because the Lord loves you and wouldn't let go of you. So everybody pray. Everyone say this with us. Say, Father, thank you for not giving up on me. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. My sinful life, I repent of it. I submit my will to your will. I am completely surrendered. The one I used to be is dead. I'm crucified with Christ. But I'm now alive in Christ. This is my new life. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Thank you, Jesus, for not giving up on me. Lord, I want to live for you. I need your Holy Spirit. Would you come and live in me? Holy Spirit, with the nature of the Father, come live in me. Change my life. Give me strength and power to live for Jesus, to glorify the Father and the Son. I receive it by faith. My faith is in Christ alone. No more idols. No more worship of other things. Only Jesus. Everybody say, only Jesus. Say it out loud, only Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Glory.